Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to talk about dipole, dipole. If you watch the earlier video, you already know what a dipole, dipole, what what dip, what a dipole is. Okay, you already know. For example, let's say ammonia is a dipole. Okay, and I hope you remember. If not, please go and watch that video again. Because nitrogen has a lone pair, the molecule is not symmetrical. The angles are not the same. So, which means that this entire thing becomes slightly negative and these hydrogens become slightly positive. If you could visualize the ammonia molecule has a, has a square or a rectangle like this. So one side of the rectangle is slightly negative and one side of the rectangle is slightly positive. So this is like a bar magnet, okay? This is like a bar magnet. So when you have many, many, many ammonia molecules, many, many ammonia molecules, what will happen is they will arrange themselves, okay? They will arrange themselves so that, you know, the positive side and the negative side face each other. Okay, so let me try to draw this up. Okay, so that's, that's basically what will happen. So if one side was negative and the other side was positive, they will be facing each other. So like for example, let's say if this side was negative, this side will be positive. Okay, and, uh, and, and let's say if this wasn't positive, this side will be negative and this will be positive and this will be positive as well. Okay, let's say. And then the opposite side will be negative, right? So this side will be positive, this side will be negative, this side will be negative, this side will be positive, this side will be negative. And then uh, on this side, what will be attracted on this side would be something which is negative and this side will be positive and so on. So this is how they will align themselves, right? So this attraction that exists this attraction that exists between them, this attraction that exists between them, between the positive side and the negative side, this is what we call dipole, dipole, okay? So th this is what we call dipole, dipole. So this is the attraction. So these are called dipole, dipole forces, okay? Dipole, dipole forces. Now, it is a bit difficult for us to know who has a stronger dipole, dipole, okay? So like for example, uh, who has stronger dipole, dipole, okay? So this, un this question is a little bit difficult to answer. But, but, okay, but, okay, so one thing is, if you see, if you see hydrogen directly bonded to oxygen or hydrogen directly bonded to nitrogen or hydrogen directly bonded to fluorine. Aha. If you look at a molecule, right, if you look at a molecule and then you notice hydrogen is directly bonded to oxygen or hydrogen directly bonded to nitrogen or hydrogen directly bonded to uh, fluorine, then you can say hydrogen bonds bonds exist. Okay. Now, what are hydrogen bonds? These are stronger version of dipole, dipole, okay? Stronger version of dipole, dipole. So, like, for example, I just did something here for you, right? So, you can see in this example here, hydrogen is directly bonded to nitrogen. So, which means that ammonia can make hydrogen bonds, okay? Ammonia can make hydrogen bond. Who else can make hydrogen bonds? Okay, so you know all of this fellas. Water, okay, in water, hydrogen is directly bonded to oxygen, right? Or let's say ethanol. In the case of uh, ethanol or all alcohols, in all alcohols, they have this functional group. So you notice in this functional group, hydrogen is directly bonded to oxygen. So there is hydrogen, there is hydrogen bonding. Okay, so hydrogen bonding will exist in these molecules as well. So whenever hydrogen is directly bonded to oxygen or nitrogen or fluorine, there is hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is stronger than normal dipole-dipole. If there is no, if none of this exists, then it's just dipole-dipole. Okay, then it is just dipole-dipole. Is that clear? All right, so let me just very quickly talk to you about ion-dipole. Now, what is ion 
dipole. So dipole I've already explained to you and ion is basically an ion. So for example, water. Water is a dipole. Okay, water is a dipole. So if you look at water, water. Okay, so this is one lone pair, that's one lone pair. So this side of water is slightly negative, this side is slightly positive, this side is slightly positive. Am I right? So water is a dipole. When you have a dipole and you have an ion, so let's say for example, we dissolve sodium chloride. Okay, we dissolve sodium chloride in water. So we decide to dissolve sodium chloride in water. What will happen? Okay, what will happen? So what happens is, when you have water, when you have sodium chloride dissolving water, oh sorry, water dissolving sodium chloride, what did I just say? What will happen is, the, the negative ions, right, the negative ions will arrange themselves so that they are facing the positive side. Okay, they are facing the positive side. And meanwhile, the positive ions will, will be towards the negative side of the ion, of, of the dipole. Okay. So all water molecules will arrange themselves in such a way. Like for example, let's say another water molecule here. Let's say. So this part was slightly negative. So this will align itself with the positive side. Okay. So this attraction between a dipole and the ion is called ion dipole. Okay. This is what it's called. And when you write equations, when you write equations, we always write sodium aqueous and then we write chloride aqueous. So this aqueous basically means, basically means a sodium ion which is surrounded by water molecules. Okay. And the water molecules will arrange themselves so that the negative side is facing the positive ion. That's what it is. Okay. So that's what aqueous basically means so when you have a chloride ion so when you have a chloride ion right so what will happen is there'll be water molecules surrounding it in six different directions okay up down all over there'll be six so there's one what uh, there's one uh, uh water molecule at the top and one water molecule at the bottom as well so what will happen is in in the case of this the positive side of the water molecule will be facing the negative ion okay uh, that's what happens Right? So this attraction between the positive side of a dipole and a negative ion or a positive ion in this case is called ion dipole. That's what it's called. Okay. And and the last thing was um and the last thing was just now dipole induced dipole, right? I think it's here. Let's uh, so here you it makes your life very easy. All molecules ha all have dispersion forces. Are they polar? No. If they are not polar, they only have dispersion forces. If they are polar, they may have hydrogen bonding or they are just dipole dipole, right? So ion dipole, I've explained to you just now. And uh, there is this one dipole induced dipole. Basically, when you have a dipole, let's say you have a molecule, which is a dipole. Okay, let's say you have a dipole. This is a dipole. Okay, so one side of the dipole is negative, one side is positive. And then you bring it to a molecule, which is not a dipole. Like, let's say you have a normal molecule like this. And in this molecule, all of the electrons are distributed very nicely around each other. Okay. They are distributed perfectly around each other. So initially, let's say this, sorry. Initially, let's say this dipole was away somewhere else. And this molecule is perfect. It's, it has all the electrons all well distributed. But when you bring the dipole close to it, let's say you bring the dipole, okay, let's say you do this, you bring the positive side here, or you bring the negative side here. Okay, let's say we bring the positive side here, okay? What will happen is all of the electrons will get pulled to this side because they're all getting attracted to the positive side. When they all get attracted to this side, what happens? This side of the molecule becomes slightly negative, this side becomes slightly positive. So this attraction now, this attraction now, okay, sorry, make this bigger, okay. So this attraction now between the dipole and this, this, this molecule is called dipole induced dipole. It's an induced, induced dipole. 
so this molecule was not a dipole was not a dipole it has been induced to become a dipole that's that's basically what it is okay that's a dipole induced dipole so what you guys need to know is you need to know what is dispersion forces how dispersion forces strengths vary with size uh, you need to know about dipole dipole who can have dipole dipole if the molecule is polar 100% that is dipole dipole and among those dipole dipoles who can end up having hydrogen bonding so that is also important for you okay all right with that we are con we can conclude this entire study area number two